In the last lesson, we talked about circumcenter and incenter, so the points of concurrency of your perpendicular bisectors and your angle bisectors. We've actually got two more points of concurrency we're going to talk about in our triangle. So today we're going to look at what's called the centroid and the orthocenter. So before we can talk about the centroid, we have to define the segment called the median. So let's go ahead and write down the definition of median. Okay, so a median is a segment whose endpoint, um, one endpoint is the vertex of a triangle and the other endpoint is the midpoint. And remember, you can tell if something is the midpoint by looking for these congruent marks, right? So the side is being cut in half. So what I've just done here in green on this triangle is a median. So again, a segment whose endpoints are a vertex and a midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, so then the sum trade, of course, is going to now be our point of concurrency of the three medians. So you can take each vertex and connect it to the midpoint of the opposite side to create what we call the centroid. So let's go ahead and write that down next. All right, so now we have, again, the point of concurrency of the medians of a triangle. So you've got three medians that I've done here in green, blue, and red. And then this point where they all intersect, that point of concurrency, this is what we call the centroid. All right. So now that we know what a centroid is, there's an important thing to note here um, because it does show up in one, I think, some word problems here or there. And it's also kind of just nice to know. Um, the centroid is also what we call the center of gravity of the triangle. So it's the point where a triangle would actually balance. So let's write that note down as well. Again, just kind of interesting. And if I'm asking you to find the center of gravity, you know you're looking for the centroid. All right, so again, just look for that in vocabulary in the word problem. If I'm asking for, again, where will the triangular region balance or where will the triangle balance, find that centroid, okay? So connected to centroid is what we call the centroid theorem. So, of course, again, this point of concurrency gives us more information about segments, about things going on in this triangle. So the centroid theorem says that the centroid of a triangle is located two-thirds of the distance away from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we're going to write that down. I think this actually makes more sense when you look at the equation in the relationship. All right. So again, that's your centroid theorem. Remember, feel free to pause if you need to write this down. Um, but I'm just going to keep on talking. OK, so if you take a look at this diagram, we know here that P is the centroid because notice it goes from a vertex to midpoint. Right. So that makes it a centroid. So we know P is the centroid. of triangle A, B, C. Now, what does this tell us based on the centroid theorem? So why don't we look at one median at a time? So let's just look at this median A, Y, all right? So what this theorem says is that the distance from the vertex to the midpoint, um, sorry, the distance from the vertex to the centroid is two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the midpoint. So basically, the distance AP is going to equal two-thirds of the whole median AY. And again, this is your centroid theorem. So again, each vertex uh, has its own median, so we can also say CP is equal to two-thirds of CX. And what do you think that last relationship for the median BZ is going to be? Well, we would be able to say that BP, right, vertex to centroid, is equal to two-thirds of BZ. Now, related to that, you can also say PZ is one-third of BZ, right? So use that segment addition postulate idea, right, two-thirds and one-thirds to make one whole. And sometimes that's handy in a problem, okay? Let's take a look at the first example. Example one, in triangle LMN, RL is 21, SQ is 4, find each length. Now, remember, when we're dealing with points of concurrency, it's really important for you to identify what do we have in center, circumcenter, um, centroid, and what we're going to look at later, orthocenter, because that's going to help you figure out the relationship you're using. So here again, we're looking for two things for centroid, right? See that the endpoint is a vertex. Oops, that's my dog. Don't worry about that. And the other endpoint here is the midpoint. When you have a vertex and a midpoint, we know that S is the centroid. 
right? So now we know we have a centroid, which means we can say a bunch of things. I could say, you know, NS is two thirds of NQ, um, R, excuse me, not R, LS is two thirds of LR, right? MS is two thirds of MP, right? This is all what we know from the idea that S is the centroid. Now, going back to the problem, I want to say, well, what is the most important part here? Um, and oops, man, I have typos all over the place. We have two parts of this problem. Here's part A. We're going to find LS, okay? So if I know RL is 21 and SQ is 4, how do I find LS? Well, the entire thing L to R is 21, and I know that LS is two-thirds of LR, so all I'm going to do is plug in that value, 21 in for LR, right? And then two-thirds times 21 is going to get me 14 units. Okay, part B, which I, again, sorry, forgot to type onto this. Let's also find NQ. Now, NQ is the entire length of that median, so this is where it could get a little tricky, all right? Um, I know SQ here is 4. So if SQ is 4, right, how's that going to help me find NQ? We can do a couple of things. If I can figure out what NS is, I can figure out NQ right? Or remember, if NS is two-thirds of NQ, then SQ should be one-third of NQ, right? Because two-thirds plus one-third equals one, right? That's just using some logic. So then if I know SQ is four, I can solve for NQ by multiplying both sides by 3, and NQ should equal 12 units. Right? I think that's the more straightforward way, but of course, you could use the centroid theorem to figure out NS as well, um, or use the segment addition theorem to figure that out as well, but I think this one's a little more straightforward. But if that's confusing, feel free to let me know in class, and I'll show you the alternative. Okay? Don't forget to come back to class and ask questions if you have questions on any of these things. All right. Finally, let's bring this to the coordinate plane for centroid before I move on to orthocenter. Take a look at example two. A sculptor is shaping a triangular piece of iron that will balance on the point of a cone. Notice that keyword, balance. Okay, we've got a triangular piece that's going to balance. Those are two things we want to look at together. Okay, um, what coordinate will the triangular region balance? So if I imagine, you know, making a cone, balancing a triangle on top of it, where would I put it on the coordinate plane, uh, the point of the cone, right? So remember, if we're looking for where the triangle is going to balance, this is a key phrase telling us, let's find the centroid. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the point of intersection of your medians, right? So go from your vertex to the midpoint, right? Go from the vertex to the midpoint. Um, to get your median. So I want to tell you two ways to do this, and you guys can really think about what's easiest for you. I know I have a personal preference, but um, you can look at both and decide for yourself. So here's method number one. All right. What we're going to do is we are going to draw um, two medians using two midpoints. Right. So, for example, let's call this triangle ABC, just so you know which points I'm talking about. Um, let's find the midpoint of AB. Right. Use your midpoint formula. X1 plus X2 over 2. Y1 plus Y2 over 2. And find that midpoint. And I'm going to find the midpoint of AB and BC. So there's my midpoint work, right? Finding the midpoint of AB, which is 8 and 6.5, the midpoint of BC, which is 9 and 4.5, and you can see on the graph I sketched them in. So to find the centroid, all I have to do now is actually connect the midpoint to the opposite. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. 
connect the midpoint to the opposite vertex. So take that midpoint and connect it to the vertex. So there's my first median. All right. And then here is my second median. And that point of intersection is going to be that centroid we're looking for, right? So right here, this is the centroid. Right, so my centroid is going to be at the point eight comma five. And there's my answer. All right, so that is one way to find the centroid. The second way you can do this is imagine balancing, right? What do we mean when we balance, right? Um, you can think about it as an average, right? Balancing scales, things like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically average the point. I'm going to put that in quotes because that's what I'm using to describe the, the process. So we're going to average the vertices, which means all you're going to do is do x1 plus x2 plus x3, so the three different x values, divide it by three. Right, y1 plus y2 plus y3, the three different y values of the vertices, and divide it by three. And let's see if we get the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to do the x for a, the x for b, the x for c, right, the y for a, the y for b, and the y for c, Oops. and divide it by three. And that's going to give me 24 over 3. And 15 over 3, which reduces back down to that same thing. So two different methods. Personally, I prefer method number two, but um, visual people might prefer method number one. Regardless of what you do, show me that work. That is a centroid. Okay, cool. So that is your centroid and centroid theorem. Three points of concurrency down, one left to go.